most of them, if not the great majority of them, uh, think of cybersecurity as uh, something that a bunch of gigs sit in a basement and work on. Cybersecurity experts say that in an increasingly interconnected world, cyber threats do not recognize borders. This, they say, makes international cooperation essential for maintaining security and stability in the digital realm. My next guest says that for African countries, global cybersecurity cooperation is particularly important as it enables them to share knowledge, resources, and best practices so they can effectively defend against cyber threats that could disrupt economic growth and social stability. Ambassador Omar Aruna, the co-founder of the Center for Cyber Diplomacy and Leadership in partnership with the George Washington University, tells me that by working together, African nations can build a resilient digital environment, safeguard their national interests, and contribute to a safer global cybersecurity. He joined me in studio. The Center for Cyber Diplomacy and Leadership uh, uh, is a center that I uh, put together in partnership with the George Washington University and to address some of the gaps and issues when it comes to cybersecurity by focusing on Africa. What inspired me is that, like I was telling you earlier, I had a cybersecurity consulting firm with US Africa Cybersecurity Group. But I realized that as a practitioner of cybersecurity on a technical level, there is a gap between the understanding of the leadership and the cybersecurity. So at, uh, by creating the uh, Center for Cyber Diplomacy and Leadership, I wanted to bridge that gap. The, the gap is simple. The leadership, I'm talking about from the head of state to, to, to the uh, senior manager, including uh, a head of enterprises, CEO of enterprises, most of them, if not, the great majority of them real, uh, think of cybersecurity as uh, something that a bunch of gigs sit in a basement and work on. But if uh, uh, you think of cybersecurity as that way, then you miss the point. So I decided, I said, listen, I need to bring the understanding of cybersecurity to those leaders and on a non-technical way. But to train them so they can understand that this is risk management. I'm talking about country risk management, enterprise risk management, and a lot more to it than just uh, a technical issue. Mm. That's what inspired me to create a center for cyber diplomacy and leadership. Okay. So what is cyber diplomacy? How does that work? Well, the, the way I like to explain to people what cyber diplomacy is is simple. You know cyber attack is something that is widespread around the world but you cannot localize the cyber attack. The cyber, the cyber criminal may not be in your country. Mm -hmm. He may be outside your boundary, outside your, uh, uh, your frontier, your territory. Your territory. Mm -hmm. So if you get attacked, I like, I like to give this example. I'm like, okay, fine. One country uh, uh, financial system is attacked. Uh, there is no payment from the government. Mm. And then the technical people realize that this attack is coming from another neighboring country. You have to be able to engage with that neighboring country on a uh, basis of diplomacy, mm. but applying, uh, but uh, addressing a cybersecurity issue. You cannot just go and then accusing around people that the uh, country that they're attacking you. Mm. So that's where the notion of cyber diplomacy come into play. Where are your diplomats? As a diplomat, have to understand uh, how to engage mm. in a case where there is a cyber attack and the source is localized outside of the boundary. So if the threat is outside of your boundaries, how are you able to get to it and engage or basically uh, I engage with other, with without, other leaders uh, uh, that are in uh, that. Without the, with uh, other leaders, without creating issues, any issues yeah. with countries. <laughs> right. And start another war, yeah. basically. Right, so right, that's right. the whole notion of cyber diplomacy. How do you see the role of African leaders in uh, the global cyber governance evolving in the next decade? I think uh, Africa will have to play a major role. And our leaders have to be at the forefront 
of that for the simple reason. That's one of the reasons, principal that I have created the Center for Cyber Diplomacy and Leadership. Mm. They have to be at the forefront of that uh, engagement just to the, to the fact that first, we have a very uh, uh, young population, so they're engaging actively onto the digital world. Uh, in addition to that, uh, most of the economic activity in the world uh, will, be, will be happening in Africa. And uh, in, uh, uh, the fact is that also those trends are also followed by the bad guy, mm. the cyber uh, criminal. They also know those trends, so they will engage on those territories. So if we don't have our leader uh, understanding what the issue is, if the form, uh, they, uh, they, they will be missing the coach. At the same time, they will be in a situation where they will not take uh, advantage of the digital mm. evolution. Mm. So basically, what it is is like uh, uh, our Afri uh, Africa will be actually the next frontier where cyber uh, security or cyber criminality or cyber war will play just because of all the other activities are engaging in that Especially level. we see the rapid uh, uh, evolution and development of uh, the digital economy on the continent. The, the youngest population by 2035, 2050, at least one of four people in this world will be African and we know how fast they've been in, engaging with, uh, with technology, especially you know, smartphones and on all these other issues. So you want the leaders to be at the forefront of this ever-evolving landscape. De definitely. And that's yeah. why uh, we, for the Center for Cyber Democracy Leadership, we have a strong partnership with the George Washington University. So George Washington University can provide a very robust academic uh, backing to the whole initiative. And to go back a little bit further for you is the case of, uh, you know, we have, a, a, to some extent, a bipolar war that we, we used to have where the U.S. The had, East and the West. Uh, the East and the West, mm. and then evolve into threat like that. And mostly what happened, there is a war that is happening now that people don't pay attention to, is the cyber war. Where are the people on the West and the people on the East? If we can even state that, people, but basically the bad actors, state actors, against the, what they call the good state actor, mm. are fighting, but they're using Africa as a proxy. Mm. For example, uh, you heard around the world that there were a cyber attack in the US or cyber attack in Iran, but those attacks are used through some of those infrastructure that are not really secure on the African continent. Right. So oh, oh, we, even the threats are non-aligned, they're yes, not east or west. Uh, yes, they're <laughs> not aligned. Yeah. But the fact is like because of our practice of cyber uh, security in Africa, mm. we still uh, leave the door open for those bad actors to engage their enemies or their uh, adversary through our own infrastructure. Mm. Now we know this is a field of study that is kind of new. Uh, but what kind of advice would you give to, say, emerging leaders and organizations in Africa who are just beginning to navigate these uh, complexities of the digital landscape? But I would tell them that digital landscape is something that they need to pay attention to because it's all they really can uh, 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 how do they, uh, advance on, basically. And I like to tell people, and uh, when I meet uh, head of state or minister, I tell them, listen, if... Uh, by a cyber uh, criminal attacks, you are not able to pay, for example, your functionary mm. for, and the bank cannot release money for your uh, civil servant for a month, you will be toppled, mm. definitely. <laughs> right. You will be toppled. <laughs> or if you cannot, uh, uh, simple, you cannot provide electricity for a full month mm. for a country, you, people will go on the road. So cyber security is something that you need to pay attention, actually, as much as you pay attention to agriculture, to economy, to social issues, you should be as, uh, paying attention to cyber security mm. as well. And how does your center promote, uh, I guess, uh, uh, working together, just cooperation between these different countries, or different states, uh, I guess international cooperation in the cyberspace. And what role do African leaders play in these efforts? But basically what we have been doing is we are engaging, uh, obviously, the, uh, the cyber uh, experts in the U.S. And we have a program called the Fellowship Program for PhD in mm -hmm. cyber securities that come in and then they think to the overall cyber security issue, but focusing on Africa. And the same, and in addition, also we engage the uh, U.S. ambassadors here. I mean, the African ambassador in the U.S. 
where we, we, we provide them with some sort of uh, workshop, similar, so they can understand the issue. And also we bring in uh, uh, high level uh, uh, Western or US uh, uh, actor in the cyber security mm -hmm. in contact with the high level African actor in the cyber, uh, cyber sphere, where they can share knowledge and understand each other's needs so and uh, come together with policies basically that's how we our center work uh, and get to engage we are a center basically that we we don't want to be the traditional cyber security technical uh, 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 shop we are a center who we aim, uh, we bring leader so they can think to a problem create a policy that fit them and uh, train them to understand and to be uh, actually a uh, major player in the world stage when it comes to cyber security. And we move that from head of state to minister, going to general manager, to top level uh, thing. That's where we focus. Now, finally, we just had an incident a couple of weeks ago with the issue of crowd strike. Correct. Um, that affected uh, everywhere, every part of the world. If there's anything that uh, I guess COVID taught us, is that we're so much a, a very connected world. We are. <laughs> <laughs> and CrowdStrike was uh, another example. Uh, and we saw, uh, you know, planned flights mm -hmm. being, you know, Cancel. canceled People have been all over. Stranded around the world. What are some of the lessons that I guess we took or you took from that incident? And Let, how do we mitigate that from happening again? Basically, you know, is not uh, if it will happen, is when it will happen. So basically, I like to tell people, take it seriously, apply, and make sure you have a contingency plan. And you secure yourself. That's the first step. You will secure yourself. You will have to basically identify what are your critical infrastructure. And once you've done that, don't expect that you're safe. It will happen. But once it happens, your contingency plan Contentious plan, how do you plan for to recover mm. and to start over again? Have a plan A and plan B. Plan, and plan B, C. plan C, plan <laughs> B, because it's a matter of time that will happen. Mm. So just don't uh, make sure uh, that you have strong, good policy. And the basic stuff is that you have to educate uh, your people. When I talk about your people, the population, the young people, the old people at home, everybody has to have an awareness about what is the cyber criminality can cause. As you see, uh, the first day of the Olympic game in Paris, uh, the uh, 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 transportation was uh, really uh, come to a standstill mm -hmm. because of cyber attack. And those things will happen every day. You will go to your uh, uh, bank, which happened with the crowd strike. People were going to the bank and they couldn't get they money. Couldn't get their money. They yeah. couldn't get money. I mean, you want to fly and you are at the airport, nothing is happening. So it will happen. This is the world where we are, and we have to face it. And I think uh, I like to tell Africans that we don't have to be the last to engage. We can be at the forefront of this situation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ambassador Aruna, thank you so much for taking time to Th come and chat Thank with you. Us. My pleasure for having me. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you.